Awesome. So that saves me a couple slides so we can maybe roll, uh, roll quick here and get to lunch. Um, thank you, Ben. So you may know me from Nexus. Uh, I am the VP of Sales. Ben did a great job introducing me. I'm not going to tell the alligator story or the oyster story if you read the bio, but I do, have a, I do have a story to tell. You either know me from Nexus or you possibly know me uh, as the guy who looks like that guy. Um, I thought people go, I think I know you. And I'm like, no, I'm not that guy. I'm like a foot shorter. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a beast. Uh, I am gonna tell a story real quick though about the first Meet Magento I was at, and I think it has lots of applications, plus it's a fun story to tell. Um, I was in New York uh, for Meet Magento like five years ago. My first one, I think I'd been at Nexus for just a few months, and I got this like wild idea that I was like, you know what, I'm in New York, I'm going to buy a counterfeit purse for my wife. I'm gonna do that, because that's a, it felt like a thing. I'm from Texas, so like bear with me. I felt like that was a thing in New York. I should buy something counterfeit and bring it home, and that would be cool. Um, but I had no idea what to do, and so I did what we all do. I Googled it uh, in my hotel room one night, um, like buying counterfeit purses in New York, and there was this, like, this how-to article. And it was like, go to Chinatown, get off at this stop on the subway, walk down this street, and while you're walking down the street, these women will start whispering designer purse brands to you, like Louis Vuitton, Coach, things like that. I'm like, Okay, and then you just acknowledge that they whisper to you, and they lead you back through the store to the alley, and a van pulls up, and you have to have cash. They didn't take plastic at the time, maybe they do now. Um, but you had to have cash, and this van would pull up, and you either transacted out of the van, or you get in the van, and the van proceeds to like drive around the block, and you transact, and then they drop you back off in the alley, and you walk back out through the store. And I thought, I can do this, like that's really easy. I have steps, one, two, three, four, five, like I'm good. So um, I probably told Jerry uh, a lie about why I was leaving the booth. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get lunch, I need a break or whatever. Got on the subway, got off at the stop. I start walking down the street, right? Doing everything the how-to says. Um, and then these women start whispering designer purse names to me. And I lost my mind, and I just turned around and got right back on the subway and went right back to the conference, and I was like, nope, I'm not getting in a van, I'm not gonna die, this is not happening, this is like way too freaky. Um, there's trust issues there, uh, there's trust issues with the process, there's, um, like I read something online that was actually true, like I should have believed what I read, um, because it, it sort of played out that way. Um, I didn't get a, a, a counterfeit purse at all, uh, but it was scary and it was a lot of change for me in my life again from Texas and then trying to buy counterfeit purses in Chinatown. Um, it was way different. And I think maybe that story has some parallels, but it's always fun to talk about in New York. Um, so you know a little bit about me and some misadventures. I'd like to know a little bit about who you are. Uh, could I get a show of hands if you're on like the agency dev side of things? Okay, so we're half the room. And then merchants, maybe don't raise your hands all the way up, just like a half raise so everybody doesn't attack you. Okay, cool. Um, and then how many people running Magento 1 of the merchants in the room? Okay, a decent number. Magento 2 merchants in the room? Okay, it's like maybe half and half, that's good. Any non-Magento people? People are like, I'm checking Magento out, that's why I'm at this conference. Okay, so it's like family, we're good. Okay, cool. So let's talk about this a little bit. Um, the reason you came to this is because potentially there is a problem, right? Uh, we have an end of life of uh, Magento 1. It'll be June 2020, that's next year. Uh, from today, that's about 10 months. So we've been saying a year, but really it's like, it's like 10 months away. Like we're gonna get through Black Friday, Cyber Monday, holidays, and then boom, this is like next biggest challenge probably for most merchants to face. And this talk uh, is really about what should you do? Right? What should, what, what should your, what, what are the choices you should be making? Um, what are the choices you should be evaluating? Right? What are the how-to articles you should be reading? Um, so that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna get into a bit. Um, to sort of frame this in terms of how big a problem this may be, and, and I keep using the word problem, uh, probably opportunity is the happy word I should use. Um, these numbers are directionally correct. Uh, maybe about a quarter million live, active Magento 1 sites out there. Maybe about 50,000 uh, Magento 2 sites. So that's a pretty big, like, to get all those 200,000 
Magento 1 sites over to Magento 2, uh, or at least potentially off of Magento 1, that, that's a lot to do in 10 months, right? Even with everybody sort of putting, putting in the effort, uh, that's a lot to do. Does this mean Magento Geddon? Um, we've been, it's a fun word to say, in the office over and over again. Um, I don't know that it's Magento Geddon now. Uh, I don't know that it will be Magento Geddon come next June. That's sort of like what we're here to decide, right? Is this gonna be a Magento Geddon event where, you know, commerce as we know it uh, sort of ends or takes some massive hit? Or do things just like keep chugging along? Uh, and that's kind of what I wanna look at. Um, I think, you know, I would say don't panic. We've been here before. I have a couple of examples. I like anecdotes and pictures. Um, we used to just have an Atari 2600. That was like what we had. And now we've got Xboxes and Playstations and hundreds of games. And, and as a, you know, from a gaming perspective, you may be like, sweet choices, but I guarantee you that when like Atari started to wither away, there was like panic. I've got, in the, it was panic in the industry, there was panic, like I have this Atari and 50 games, what do I do now that there's this new stuff coming out? Um, another example, Levi's, right? At one point in time, only Levi's. Now, hundreds of brands of blue jeans that you can purchase that maybe have a better fit, right? So we've gone through changes on the apparel side. Uh, this one I thought was fun, Napster. I don't know if it's 20 years old yet, but to me, in my mind, it's like 20 years old. That's, that's crazy to think about. But the way we consume digital music completely changed with Napster and then has completely changed since then. Uh, legal or illegal uh, consumption of digital music has has just uh, completely changed. So we've seen, we've seen that industry uh, in upheaval, but guess what, it's still there. And then my favorite operating system of all time, Windows XP, it was great. Man, you could just strip that thing down, it was fantastic. Uh, right, it, it end of life at some point, and we had to pick new operating systems um, or just like go to Apple and be happy. Um, so that's, like we've seen this before, this is not a new thing, maybe you know, new for us in the Magento space, right? It's a big inflection point uh, for those who have been working with Magento for a decade now, or you know, five years, or you know, even two years. This is a big inflection point in the e-commerce space. Um, but it's not the end of the world, right? None of, these, none of these things went away just because they got old, or there was a newer version, or there was more competition in the marketplace. Um, so yeah, now I've told you a story about buying counterfeit purchase, uh, purses, uh, I've talked about video games and blue jeans, um, and you're probably sitting there like, WTF, this is my job and my business, and we make money doing this, please continue. So don't flip the Magento table on me yet, uh, we'll get to the good stuff. Uh, step one, evaluate your needs, right? So before we get to like, what are the options, Let's talk about, or at least from my perspective, from the Nexus perspective, um, how do we get to, like, what is the best choice for me? What are some of the questions you should be asking yourself over the next, like, two or three months? The first one is, like, let's be real about how many product SKUs we have, um, and more importantly, like, how many we need, right? Nexus works with a lot of merchants, and some merchants are like, uh, they never declutter, right? So they've got these SKUs, that have not been active on the site for you know, maybe years at this point, but they're just sitting in a database, right? Maybe it's time to clean house. Maybe the, the number of active SKUs or the number of SKUs you're, you want to sell is way smaller than the total, the total SKU database that you have. So start thinking about that. How many, how many SKUs do you actually have? How many do you want to have? And then it's sort of a secondary question there. How complicated are your products? How much customization do you have? Do you have t-shirts with sizes? Do you have 50 different colors for every you know, t-shirt? Do you have 20 styles and cuts of blue jeans and, and then sizes uh, and whatnot all within that, right? So the customization of those products is gonna be key to deciding what platform you wanna move to after Magento 1. Uh, how many extensions are you currently using, right? Did you take Magento 1 and you were like, this is pretty good, but I'm gonna tack a bunch of stuff on here and make it even better. Right? You just totally blow out the Magento One feature set and you've got this really awesome thing. It's gonna be way harder to take that and port it over to a Magento Two or some of the other options that I'm gonna talk about. Um, it's gonna be way more difficult than if you have like a out of the box Magento One install. Right? Um, in addition to extensions, like how custom did you get into the code? Right? How, how tweaked is this? Um, did you mess with core? Right? Um, how, how many 
issues do you have when there are security patches and security updates of your site just completely breaking? Again, questions you should be asking yourself. Um, and then order volume, right? Let's be real about uh, what, you know, I'll go ahead and, like, what's your budget, right? What's your budget to replatform? How much money is appropriate for you to spend? Not how much do you want to spend, because we want it, like, our want to spend is way down here. The appropriate level to spend is maybe, like, closer to here. Um, but what's appropriate based on the number of orders you're getting, the growth of your business, um, maybe the stagnation of your business, you know, whatever it might be. I have a real discussion internally about you know, what that is, um, because this is a, or I'm assuming you're at Meet Magento, this is a key part to your business. So let's be real about how much money we have to spend. Uh, and then be real about you know, what's gonna change in your space, right, your e-commerce vertical over the next 12, 24, 36 months. Right? You, may, you may go from a, a business where you're like, I've got this really diverse set of products, and now I only wanna sell two products. Um, or there's regulation coming in my industry. I, I feel it, um, you know, I'm seeing it coming down the road and that's gonna mean something different for me 12 months from now or 24 months from now. Um, and I may need to, I mean, to plan for that as I uh, go through this decision-making process. Um, and then sort of secondary to this, and I've maybe alluded to this, like what would you do different? Right? I think maybe not everybody, but I sort of assume everybody has like some things they don't like about their Magento One site, maybe like one or two things that you don't talk about. Um, but what would you go back and do differently, right? If you could go back and talk to yourself at the beginning of your Magento One build, what would you tell that person, right? Hey, use fewer extensions, right? You don't need some of this stuff that you thought you needed, right? You never use that, you know, marketing integration that you just thought was gonna be a game changer to your business, right? Have a real discussion with yourself about, um, again, what would you have done different? And then finally, like, what's your timeline? And, and we're gonna sort of talk about, you know, we've got this June 2020 deadline, this end of life, but realistically, like, can we extend that deadline, right? Is my deadline beyond June 2020 or is it, or is it sooner, right? Do I really need to think about replatforming in January or February because I wanna hit, you know, the July 4th holiday and so, you know, I need plenty of time uh, to get there. So think about your timeline, when you need to make that decision. Um, yeah, evaluating your needs. So now that we've kind of gotten through that piece, I want to talk about some of the options. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is Magento 1, sort of versus Magento 2, or Magento 1 or Magento 2. Again, we can frame it kindly. Um, but I'm also going to talk about other things. So let's talk about WooCommerce. I know it's a Magento event. It's okay. You're safe. Uh, but we are going to talk about WordPress and WooCommerce a little bit. Um, there are other options. I'm not really going to talk about Centaro, but like Drupal has a commerce platform, right? They have a commerce plugin. Um, Big Commerce, it's a SaaS, that's a SaaS logo. I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to show you the other SaaS logo. I'm going to show you Cilius. Um, it's another, you know, like PHP based, uh, open source type uh, e commerce platform. Shopify, there it is. I'm going to space that out. Everybody go ahead and take a picture, Shopify and BigCommerce on a Magento slide. It's good stuff. Uh, and then, oh, this is a big one, Oro. Yeah, I did it, it's up there. Uh, right, if you're B2B focused, maybe Oro is something that you need to explore. Um, today, we're gonna talk about Woo, we're gonna talk about SaaS in general, we're gonna talk about M1 and M2, and then I'm gonna sort of group everything else that's, that's something that can be hosted, not non-SaaS, in like an other category, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit. All right, let's get into it. Uh, Magento, Magento One, so staying on Magento One. So if you're like, you know what, I love my Magento One site, it's perfect. It's like that old pair of jeans that you just don't ever want to get rid of because they, they fit right, they feel good, you look good in them. Um, it's the devil you know, right? Like, there are some flaws, you have struggles. I know you have struggles because you call Nexus when you have those struggles. Um, it's the devil you know, right? You know what those struggles are, you're familiar with them, you can handle them. Um, you know, that's it's a reason to stay on M1. Another reason is that the community is behind this. Right? The, the community that it makes Magento so beautiful and so powerful is, is encouraging you to like, hey, you should think about staying on M1. We're going to help you extend the life of your Magento One site. I'll mention one name. Uh, Mark Lewis at Metallico has been really vocal about this. Mark's a great guy. Um, follow him on Twitter. Find him. Um, he talks a lot about this. Uh, and a big piece of the community getting behind it is security, right? So end of life really means sort of like 
No more security patches. And because this is e-commerce and we're collecting payments, we have to be conscious of PCI. We have to be conscious of security issues. Um, there are going to be more exploits of the Magento One platform, especially with all quarter million stores still out there running. Um, we, you need to be able to stay on top of that, right? And the community has said, we're going to help here. We're going to continue to help provide security patches um, to prevent those exploits from, from ruining your business. So that's a, big, that's a big pro to staying on M1, something that, that makes you feel safe. It buys you time, right? You may say, I don't, I don't really want to stay on M1. This is not my three-year plan, but I'm not, ready, I'm not ready to do this in 10 months. It's just not realistic. That's not, that's not a realistic time frame for me. Um, this buys you time, right? The community said, hey, we got you. We're going to pick you up. Um, you, can, you can sort of extend this. Uh, maybe there will be an M1 fork, right? Maybe somebody will come and say, you know what? Here's an M1 uh, lookalike with a really easy migration. This is not a replatform. This is, this is truly a, a migration. Maybe that'll happen, right? That'll buy you even more time. I'm not saying it will. I don't know anybody who's doing this. But maybe. Ten months is a long time. Also, the cost. Cost is relatively low, right? You need to do some things to future-proof your M1 site. It needs to support PHP 7, things like that. Um, but it's, you know, relative, the relative cost there is, is pretty low. Cons, limited new features, right? So you're not going to get whatever the latest and greatest is on the Magento front. Uh, you're not gonna get those new features. People who are building extensions are probably not gonna start building new extensions for Magento 1. You're not gonna see a lot of that. Um, you're not gonna see a lot of new third-party integrations, right? So that new, really awesome, cart abandonment company that just popped up you know, yesterday and, and it's, you, know, you want to jump on that because um, it's going to revolutionize your business, probably not going to make building a, an integration for M1 a priority. Maybe they will, but probably not. Um, it's hard to keep up with other software in the stack. I talked about this or mentioned this uh, briefly, right? PHP 7, there's no native support for PHP 7 and Magento 1. You have to add an extension to get PHP seven support, um, I still don't think you can get PHP like 7.2 or 7.3 support with that extension. You're gonna wanna stay up on your, you know, the rest of your software stack um, because like PHP seven is gonna be end of life uh, at some point I think in 2020, right? Like you're gonna see, um, you're gonna see the rest of your stack sort of become obsolete I at some point and it's gonna be regardless of how well we patch Magento, if it can't run the latest and greatest, you know, Apache or Nginx or PHP, uh, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be in a hard place. And then finally, security, right? So the pros is community is going to support Magento 1. The con is, like, security is still probably going to be an issue, again, because you have sort of an aging stack of, of software that you have to maintain. So pros and cons of staying on M1. Some good, some bad. Maybe it's right for you. Again, ask yourself all those questions. Magento 2. So... One alternative to staying on Magento 1 is moving to Magento 2, right? That's the one that uh, I think most of us would like to, like we just like to move over. But it is a replatform, which means you start to evaluate the move to Magento 2 like you would a move to any other platform, right? You're, you're, you're changing platforms here. Um, a pro, power moving towards the ecosystem. So I'm gonna, I wasn't there, Ben, I don't know if Ben's still in the room, I wasn't there, but I heard that Ben said some really cool stuff yesterday that I, I wish I would have heard at the PWA uh, Meetup, um, where he talked about the, the, there's a power shift, he thinks there's a power shift in the Magento space moving towards the ecosystem. The ecosystem being like merchants and developers and extension builders, right? The community, the power moving back towards the community. Um, and that's, that's really good, right? It's a pro for Magento 2. That means that all the great things you loved about Magento 1 are going to be there in Magento 2 and probably even more um, as people get more and more excited about the, the platform. Customization, right? You could do all sorts of things with Magento uh, 1, but you can do all those great things and more with Magento 2. Right? Whatever your specific use case is, Magento can handle that. Right? That's, that's why we bought into the platform to begin with. It's full featured. Right? You're going to continue to get the latest and greatest uh, extensions, um, third-party integrations, those things that we talked about you're not going to get with Magento 1, you're going to get those. Right? You're going to be able to stay at the cutting edge of e-commerce um, on the Magento 2 platform. Um, and then, again, sort of all the new stuff, and what I'm referring to there is PWAs and headless, right? That's a, that's a focus on the Magento side. Um, in fact, right, one of my first cons is content is still a struggle, right? If you're like content first, 
Um, I need content to sell, you know, to do commerce. Uh, Magento still struggles with that, but Magento 2, you know, again, the sort of the, the counter argument there is we have PWAs and we have headless. We can make content work with Magento 2. Um, another con, like, it's expensive. Right, when, we look at, when we look at builds uh, across the platforms I'm gonna show you, the, the re-platform costs for Magento 2, on average, right, in general, are gonna be higher, significantly higher than probably anything else that I'm gonna show you. Uh, and that's, right, when you have that real discussion about what's your budget, you need to keep that in mind as you start to look at, at a re-platform to, to Magento 2. I need pictures. There's a lot of text-heavy slides. So here's a really awesome Magento 2 site. Let's just kind of throw that up there. More text. Uh, let's talk about WooCommerce. Pros of WooCommerce. Uh, extensive community developers. What does that sound like? It sounds a lot like Magento. What you're going to get in the WordPress and the WooCommerce space is a really healthy, thriving ecosystem. And that's, that's a bonus. That's something that you should be uh, comfortable with, familiar with, something that you, you want and you've taken advantage of. It's a powerful content engine. If you want to be content first, like it's WordPress. It, it powers content on the internet. That's a thing. Uh, flexibility and control, right? This is not, WordPress and Woo is not inflexible. It's maybe not as feature rich, um, but it's definitely not inflexible. And then a growing ecosystem, right? Woo is still like relatively young, I would say, uh, as an e-commerce entrant, and yet it's, it's growing way faster than Magento is, right? The adoption there, and there's reasons for that, like lower barriers to entry. It's easy just to install that plugin, whether you use it or not. Um, but it's growing, right? It's a, thriving, it's a thriving ecosystem. And from a cost standpoint, right, there's, developers are plentiful uh, in the WordPress and the WooCommerce space. Um, the cost for that development work is cheaper. Your re-platform over to Woo is it's going to be cheaper if it's a good fit. So that's a pro. Cons, scaling can be tricky. Right? One of the complaints about Woo is that you know, to scale it, to actually you know, be able to handle 1,000 orders an hour, like, you've got to do some interesting stuff with the database. Thankfully, there are people like Nexus and Liquid Web doing those really fun things with it. Um, but out of the box, that's a, that's a con. Uh, limited support for complex products. We talked about this, right? If you've got products that have 20 different options on them, it's going to be harder to do that in Woo than it is in, in Magento. It might not be a good fit. Um, and then security, right? Much like... Windows is, has massive adoption and also massive security flaws. WordPress, massive adoption, potentially massive security flaws, right? You're gonna have to keep that in mind. Um, it doesn't go away just because, uh, security issues don't go away just because it's a, a completely different platform. Um, there are some really big sites, some really big cool sites built on WooCommerce. Jack Rudy, I don't know if anybody uses their like mixers and tonics and stuff, they're really good. Um, but that's a really, like, a beautiful, uh, really effective site that's built on WooCommerce. Let's talk about SaaS for a second. <clears throat> so what I'm talking about SaaS, software as a service, specifically, I'm sort of lumping big commerce and Shopify together, although I think they're very different products. We're going to talk about them as they're sort of, you know, one and the same. They're at least cousins, if not sisters. Uh, easy, right? SaaS is easy. You sort of like, it's all wizardy. You point and click, you drag and drop. All the integrations are already there, right? It's, I put easy in quotation marks. Like building a business and doing e-commerce is not easy, right? Using their tool, uh, maybe it's easy. Maybe using the tool is easy. Um, it's full featured, right? These are robust platforms. They have all the things, all the, the fulfillment plugins, the, the shipping, the sales tax, the uh, payment gateways, they, they have all that figured out, right? They either have integrations and they've partnered with people or they've you know, sort of cannibalized their partner system and built it into the tool. Either way, full featured on the integration side. Headless, right? So we talked about headless and PWAs with Magento 2. BigCommerce has a very robust headless integration with WordPress, with Drupal. I mean, you, you sort of name the open source CMS and they're, they're trying to put a, a headless version out there uh, for big commerce, right? They know that they also have a deficiency on the content side, um, and so they're, you know, they're using these other platforms that are built specifically for content uh, to augment that. And then I sort of equated the cost here with like Woo. Um, I think from a build standpoint, probably, you know, it's similar. Um, but I'm going to talk about in the cons uh, how I don't know price is fuzzy sometimes. I'll call it that uh, on the SaaS side. So con, uh, homogenous infrastructure. And what I mean there is, 
if all of your tools are built on Amazon and Amazon has an outage, you lose all your tools, like you lose your support or your live chat or whatever third party integrations you have and the SaaS platform that you're on are all built on Amazon. Is that, like, is that a bad thing? Like, do, you, do you have too many eggs in one basket? Uh, that could be a bummer. Um, the, the other thing um, I'm sort of referring to here is like, if it's all on Amazon and Amazon's the biggest seller out there, are you hosting with your competitor? Like that, that also seems a little weird at times. Um, I won't go too much further down that road. Uh, you have less control, right? You have full control with Magento and WordPress, at least to the extent that they have functionality or that you can build that functionality, you have full control over that platform, where you host it, what that infrastructure is like. You don't, you don't have that control on a SaaS platform, right? You very much play uh, within the boundaries of, of, the, of the field that they've designed. And then again, pricing models. Um, so what I was talking about, like the costs are a little fuzzy here, right? The pricing model where the more you sell, the more you pay, you hit a certain point and your costs go up, Right, like that, that pricing model, um, trying to nail down like total cost of ownership of a Shopify site is, is a lot harder than total cost of ownership of, of say like a Magento or, or WooCommerce site. And then this one I think is big and gets left out of the conversation a lot, but portability, right? If I have a Magento site hosted with Nexus, I can take that Magento site and go host it with HMojo or other company, I'm kidding. If there's anybody from MageMojo, I was kidding, right? You could move back and forth between Nexus or MageMojo or whoever, you can take that site with you. You could download it and host it out of your basement, right? Like you could do that with a Magento site or WooCommerce site. Um, you can't do that with a Shopify site. Like you can't take that and, and move it somewhere else. That content is sort of theirs. You just built it and now you're borrowing it, right? You're paying, paying them for that every month. Um, the portability piece is, I think, again, something that gets missed and like, I want to own my business, I want to own all of my business. Um, I don't want it to be like locked away somewhere. Uh, but, you know, BigCommerce built some really cool websites, right? Skullcandy, I think this is a headless implementation that they built, it's BigCommerce with WordPress driving the content, I believe, or at least it once was. It's a really beautiful site, um, check it out. Uh, and then now let's talk about other. Again, other being uh, typically other open source platforms. So I mentioned like Oro, Cilius, um, Centaro on the Drupal side. Pros, more intimate access. What do I mean by that? Uh, in the early days of Nexus, you could pick up the phone and call Chris Wells, our CEO, and like talk to him, and he would do tech support. That's the thing that would that was the thing that would happen. With a lot of companies, that's a thing that happens, right? You have intimate access to the really smart people who built those things. And if you pick some of those other platforms, like Cilius, you may pick up the phone and call them for support, and you're literally talking to the inventor of Cilius, right? Or the inventor of Centaro. Like, that's, that's a thing, because these groups are, are smaller. The adoption is smaller. Um, they're standing on the shoulders of giants, right? They've looked at other platforms like Magento and said, you know what, I think I can do it a little bit better. I think there's some things with Magento that aren't quite right. Um, and so I'm gonna sort of take all these things that they do, that I think they do correctly, and then I'm gonna like add just a little bit of special sauce on top, right? And they have that benefit, right? Because Magento paved the way. Cost, um, so potentially relatively low, but there's not a robust community of like Cilius developers or Centaro developers or agencies that are just like rushing out the door to adopt those platforms as their like go-to e-commerce solution. And when there's scarcity in the market, like that one dollar sign could you know, very well just move over to the other side, and it might. Um, cons, smaller communities, less adoption, sort of talked about that, right? You have less resources at your disposal when you need help uh, if you're running one of those platforms. Less hosting knowledge, right? So coming from a, a hosting company, right? We know less about some of these smaller platforms than we do about the big ones, right? We focus our training on Magento, and Woo and WordPress, right? The, the big platforms out there. And then we sort of deal with the questions on the smaller ones as sort of as they come, right? We try and share institutional knowledge, but I don't have like silliest knowledge base articles. Um, I have plenty of Magento knowledge base articles, but I, I don't have any silliest knowledge base, base articles. Uh, and then again, right, your cost could be really small. It could be really budget friendly. It could also be really big. Right? If that one developer that you knew, that knew one of those platforms, like, decides to then go, I don't know, like be a shoe cobbler and never touch a computer ever again in their entire life, 
what do you like? How, who are you going to call to to fix your to fix your site, right? To to patch it, to write new code. You may not be able to find that person. Uh, but you can build really cool sites. Must have subscription service that's built on Cilius, full featured e-commerce website. That's it, right? So a lot of a lot of information here. I assume the slides will be available. I will be around. Uh, I'm gonna go seamless plugs, shameless, seamless, shameless plugs. Real quick, uh, if you're in Austin at Majex next week, Miguel, our Magento master, he's over there. Find, if you're not gonna be in Austin, find him while you're here and talk to him about all this stuff and the, I think his talks on like, uh, there's panels on the issues with maintaining an open source um, solution, right, as a community. How do, you, how do you maintain a project like Magento? Uh, but Miguel's a really smart guy. You should definitely talk to him. Uh, we have an After M1 ebook available. Uh, I do this for the marketing team, make them happy. Uh, there's the link to that. You can stop by the booth um, to get some swag, and we can give you the link uh, or a piece of paper that has the link on it or something. Um, so, yep, I think maybe we have like two minutes if anybody, if there's like a question. If not, I'll be around. Cool. That's it. Y'all been a great audience. Thank you so much.